I'm Keith Cambrin, and this is the course How the Internet Works. This is Hour 2, Section 3, Internet Routers. Internet routers uh, really have several functions. Uh, recall that IP routing is a connectionless uh, service, so it is performed on a, uh, a datagram basis and routing for each datagram is independent of the ones that precede and follow it. We can break the router functions uh, down into the four you see here. There is a forwarding function, which means that is each router receives a packet uh, on an incoming interface. It has to make decisions around which outgoing interface to use to forward the packet on. The uh, second uh, function is delivery. The last router in the chain, the one that is connected to the host machines, that is the destination, uh, delivers the uh, IP datagram uh, not by forwarding but by uh, resolving the link layer addresses we've seen before. So that's a delivery function as opposed to a forwarding function. The third function is an advertisement. Um, IP routers have routing tables which we'll see shortly and those routing tables um, are, have lists in them of routes or IP address ranges that are known and they become known through an advertising process and that's a function of the particular protocols that are used. Uh, the routing update function is how those routing tables uh, get updated and uh, how the algorithms uh, really choose which outgoing interface are best uh, for a particular incoming packet. In this example, <clears throat> we have a, a customer edge router. Now that edge router could be at a home, so it could be a gateway like we've discussed before, or it could be a gateway at a large enterprise where there could be hundreds or even thousands of hosts uh, at the premises all going uh, into the internet via gateway. Um, and then we have a provider edge router which is the peer of the customer edge router and we have core routers and then finally we have a content uh, router at the destination. Again we we'll use Google as our destination. In this example, I'm using uh, two fictitious network addresses and one real one. The fictitious uh, networks I've used are the 301010 network and the 2020 network. In the example, the 3010 network belongs to the customer, uh, and the 2020 is a backbone provider that uh, has been contracted by the customer to deliver and receive internet traffic. In this example, I'm uh, going to designate this is router 1, this is router 2, and router 3 uh, in the network 2020-0. So this would be 2020-01, 2020-02, and 2020-03. I've also designated interfaces as interface uh, 2 and interface 3. Uh, that direct traffic to those respective routers. When a packet arrives from the customer edge, and in this case uh, it's this uh, IP datagram traffic uh, packet with that destination address, the uh, source address isn't important in this particular case, then the edge router that receives the packet will consult a routing table, and I've made up a routing table just for illustration purposes here. But when the packet comes in to our number one router, uh, it'll make, a deci make decisions um, along the following lines. First, if the incoming packet has an address that is the same or in the network field of the customer edge, then it's going to be discarded because a packet would not be sent back on the same link it was received on. The second test 
is uh, whether the packet is destined for the router itself. Uh, examples of uh, packets that would be destined for the router from the customer um, network would be uh, ICMP messages, that is test messages like uh, ping for example um, and uh, uh, route trace messages and so forth. So those are messages that could be um, sent to really the local protocol so let's take as our third case the example where the destination is uh, for the Google uh, Content Data Center. And in the address table, there's a 74125. And then uh, this entry would cover all addresses within that range. The action to take is forward to the next hop. So IP routing in this example is going to be done on a hop-by-hop -hop basis. That means that our edge router has no knowledge of the total network topology. All it needs to know and understand is the next router that it needs to pass the IP packet to. And that's called hop-by-hop -hop routing. So our, our next hop, we have two choices. Uh, one is our number two router which is uh, 202002, and the other one is the number three router. In the table, uh, since those addresses are indicated, and let's say the router chooses the first entry, the 02 destination, it can recursively go back into the cable and find an entry for that destination, and it sees the action is to deliver, not to forward in the strict sense. So it's not going to touch the address in the IP datagram, but it is going to use the next hop IP address to determine the link layer um, MAC address it would use to actually forward this. It's also going to select the outgoing interface, in this case, interface number two. So this means a, um, if we were Ethernet, then it would mean that an Ethernet frame is going to be constructed with the MAC address of the number two router and then the IP datagram with the destination 74.125.227.132 is going to be forwarded to that router. In a similar fashion then, the number two router will perform the same lookup uh, that we see only with its own table the table at each router is different uh, because of the way the routing updates are performed. Once the uh, packet reaches the uh, final destination, then uh, that router is going to deliver the message it's because it's going to deliver it directly to the host machines uh, with that particular address. It's going to do an ARP lookup and find a uh, MAC address or a link layer address similar to this and then the delivery of course would be a direct delivery not a routed delivery because you're not using the IP address to deliver the message you're using uh, the media access control address. Now let's take a look inside the router and better understand how a, a router is constructed. Um, some things to note before we leave this is that routers uh, often have choices. I've drawn uh, simplistic diagrams of most of the networks, but uh, we're going to see later that uh, networks are highly redundant. So in a typical case, this edge router would have uh, not just one uh, uplink to the a backbone network but would have two of them and often there would be two or more edge routers so you would have double redundancy um, and so the routers have to make choices and there are routing protocols uh, that help uh, with those choices and we'll look at those not in this uh, session but in the next session. So if we look at a, a router uh, we're going to see that there are three planes in a router, and, and planes uh, mean functional layers. Um, there is the bare plane, and that is the plane that carries the traffic, and uh, we saw a bit of that in uh, class number two, 
around how traffic goes from the physical layer up to the IP layer. So that's the bearer train where user traffic passes. The control plane uh, we're going to see is how the routing update is performed and then the management plane is where um, craft and operators go to um, actually manage and engineer the router. So here if we had traffic coming in on this optical link we would expect the traffic to come in, go up through the phi layer and the link layer, and then across the network fabric that is in the router. So I've marked this as having uh, three cards so far. You can imagine a pizza box router or a um, uh, other kind of a, a router. And uh, we see we have three cards. We have uh, two line cards one for uh, ingress and one we're going to use for egress. Of course they're bi-directional so it uh, would work the other way just as well. And then I've drawn a differentiation between the logical part of the router which is largely uh, software controlled and the physical part of the router. So this is the physical part of the router. The next layer we can look at is uh, really the control plane. So this physical layer constitutes the bearer plane and that's how bearer traffic like our query to Google would pass. The control plane is really the plane that determines how the routing is done. In the previous slide I showed a routing table in routers of scale that are large. That routing table is not uh, centralized but rather associated with each line card there's a forwarding information base. Uh, the reason is when you're carrying terabytes of traffic uh, you can't uh, really scale by having the line card go to a common card and look up something in a database. The database is distributed in this uh, forwarding information base. Uh, the control plane is uh, managed uh, centrally by the routing control which using algorithms is going to populate these forwarding information bases. The final plane is the management plane and the management plane usually resides on duplex control cards so these are essentially processors that have control buses uh, as I've shown here, this is my control bus, goes from here to there, and that control bus extends to all of the functional elements of the router that need to be either configured, measured, uh, or otherwise managed. The control plane has uh, not only configuration responsibilities and what we would call provisioning, that it means uh, building out any necessary parameters, but it also has responsibility for engineering measurements. So as our links start to become more and more congested and they get more and more traffic, we want to know when those links uh, reach their engineered capacity, which might be 60% or 70%, because that tells us we need to add more line cards. So engineering measurements and operational performance uh, statistics are going to be gathered and those generally are going to go to a set of management systems through a protocol, uh, usually SNMP is the protocol it's used. The other um, aspect of this, let me just clear this, come out of here. The other aspect are uh, failures. So inside the um, router itself, if we have a failure of the fabric, a piece of the fabric fails because it's made of hardware and hardware fails eventually, then uh, the I.O. card would issue an alarm over the uh, management bus saying I've detected a failure. Uh, that failure would be forwarded by the control card to a management system and because these routers are highly duplex uh, that particular link of failure, that particular fabric fa uh, failure, would be bypassed uh, through the good um, uh, through a good link that's on the fabric card. But uh, the uh, card, the fabric card, would need to be replaced uh, typically during a maintenance window. And we'll talk more about that in the third hour when we talk about reliable systems and how they how they function.
So these are the management functions over here, which I've mentioned already, uh, configuration, uh, performance management in uh, engineering. Um, also note that the different line cards uh, can implement different link layers and uh, you can have a, quite a range of interface uh, high speed and uh, low speed uh, cards in the line cards and they um, are all designed in a way they use the same network fabric so once the uh, IP datagrams reach the fabric then the fabric has no way of knowing uh, one kind of link layer from another it's just passed across it and then the appropriate protocol is instituted to deliver it. Here's more reading. Um, again, Comer. Uh, keep emphasizing that book. It's a, a really a wonderful reference book. And the fourth edition is includes IPv6 and a, a lot, a lot of new topics. It doesn't get into routers uh, as far as their architecture, like the slide I just showed but uh, it does cover all the routing protocols and uh, in particular has a, a good chapter on uh, routing, uh, next hop routing and uh, other forms of routing. And then my second reference is from uh, some colleagues of mine from AT&T Labs and uh, that uh, book uh, goes in good detail around routing and it's a, a deeper treatment in some ways uh, than Comer of routing and moreover, it uh, really blends in a lot of network engineering uh, that uh, gives you some insight into how large carriers manage to design uh, very reliable networks um, and how redundancy and how operations and management work.